quite suddenly, bacteria is in all the news. In 2012, when the Human Microbiome Project first published their first set of results, ever since then, every week, there's been a seemingly sensational headlines in the news. Bacterial cells outnumber human cells in your body 10 to 1. Your gut bacteria is directly linked to obesity, autism, allergies, mental health, you name it. True or not, these headlines do point to the importance of this new information. It's a new way we're learning so much more about how we actually are related to the natural world. Bacteria have been on Earth as long as there's been life, four billion years. And for many ages, there's been nothing but bacteria here. And from these simple, single-celled organisms, from these invisible cultures, Everything we see has come forth. Everything we understand from simplicity, complexity, without end. And look, humans, there we are. We evolved from upright apes a mere 250,000 years ago. We're the ones so suddenly here. And what have we done with our time since we've been here? We've evolved cultures of dominance over nature and over one another. We've been building bigger walls. We've been building more terrifying weapons, creating systems of caste, colonization, to what means, for what purpose, to give ourselves a little heads up over poverty, danger, each other. Let me show you how effective our dominance over nature really is. This is a giant Petri dish. It's a two foot by four foot Petri dish. On the outside edges, we introduce E. coli, and there's antibiotics in increasing concentrations all the way to the center. As you can see, the bacteria evolves as it reaches each threshold of new concentration of antibiotics. It takes a mere 11 days for the bacteria to completely diminish all of our defenses. I work with bacteria every day. This is my business partner, Willow, and myself at Ozuke, where we make live fermented pickles, sauerkraut, and kimchi. I love what I do. I love that the food that I make every day is, on one hand, really complex, and on the other hand, it's really, really simple. Early on in the genesis of our business, we had some dealings with a food scientist from the Denver Department of Health and Human Safety. And he said to us, he said, your product is so weird. <laughs> we follow all these FDA guidelines in food manufacturing in order to diminish bacteria. And here you are making it on purpose. It is pretty hilarious, actually, because we do have to follow these FDA guidelines very carefully. We are in the food manufacturing business. And uh, it ends up being a bit of a waltz. Two steps forward, three steps back. Make sure you wipe down all your surfaces with chlorine solution. Make sure you wash your hands after you touch anything. And then you just sit back and let the bacteria do its work. The food that we actually create is actually super, super, super safe. Unlike most processed packaged fresh foods, you go to the supermarket and most of the things you see on the shelf, they have a shelf life of like a week, tops, two weeks. That's fresh food. Our product has a shelf life of a year, two years if we're pushing it. And the reason this food is so safe is not because I'm better at this antimicrobial macarena than anybody else. It's because the bacteria are doing the work of making fermented foods pretty much bomb-proof. So this is what happens when we ferment. We get a container, we put all of, our, all of our vegetables in the container, chopped up cabbage, spices, salt. We press it down so it starts to release its own liquids. And then, inside this space, we've introduced bacteria, good and bad. Now, I didn't add the bacteria, they're there. You know, it's everywhere you go in the world. Shake hands, bacteria. Kiss, bacteria. Most of the bacteria is good bacteria, and there's a little bit of bad bacteria there. 
So we put everything in the jar, we seal it up, we push it down under its own liquid, it creates an anaerobic space. And then this is where the interesting stuff happens. And we've only been able to fully understand what's going on here in the past, I don't know, 10 years or so. Like, we haven't been able to map the exact complex things that are going on. So scientists are starting to understand it, but somehow grandmothers and grandmothers of grandmothers from Sweden to Korea have understood intrinsically how to make this work since civilization began. What happens is the bacteria creates a complex microcosm. Um, it's like a, um, an ecosystem. And uh, what they do effectively is they create a food that is no longer harmful to humans. All the bad bacteria gets moved out in this process. And then they also create a food that's more nutritious than the food we started out with. Um, and it's how human beings have been eating raw crunchy vegetables all through harsh winters as long as we've had, no, longer than we've had refrigeration. You know, refrigeration was pretty much a hole in the ground until recently. Over here, we have another example of preservation. This is our modern method of preservation, pasteurization. Again, into the jar goes all the bacterial good guys and bad guys. We seal the jar, we apply prolonged and high heat until everything within has been wiped out. We've created a bacterial vacuum. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad way to preserve food. It's actually an excellent way to preserve food. But what I'm saying is, this is a very forceful way of doing things. And in essence, we have been using similar methodologies in many things that we do in modern life. What happens because we have, what happens when we, when we try and wipe out every single germ that's in a hospital? We create superbugs. What happens when we try and wipe out weeds in large-scale agriculture? We create superweeds, and we're also throwing toxins on the ground that end up ruining our own microbial diversity and the diversity of the earth. What happens when we try and raise two million chickens in a tiny little, a tiny little lot? We create bird flu, we throw more antibiotics at our problems, and we're creating more superbugs. The vicious cycle goes on. What I'm trying to say here is that nature does not operate in a vacuum, and neither should we. We need to understand the complexity of the world in which we live, and, we, and that, then we can start to come up with solutions that do honor to our heritage. Human beings are extremely diverse. If you travel through any old world part of our planet, Every hill and vale represents a cultural divide. Languages, dress, food, it all changes very quickly over territory. Take the example of Hong Kong, where I grew up. Just the food alone. It's such a dizzying multitude of textures, flavors, smells, natural ingredients. You go to the street stores, it's like Hakka food, chiu jiao food, roast goose so damn good you would faint. I'm serious. <laughs> A wild multitude of things bobbing, sizzling, barbecuing, wrapped, seeded, guts on a stick, roasted chestnuts on hot coals. You would need a PhD in street smarts to, or the infinite wisdom of my mum <laughs> to understand it all. I joke with my mum that all Chinese women over 50 are like witches. <laughs> it's true, it's kind of creepy. They have in their brains this amazing knowledge of food and medicine. They know how to braise and broth and cook with all these different spices and stuff to keep their families healthy no matter what. They know these esoteric ingredients like lily stamen or uh, monk fruit. Human beings are as diverse as bacteria. Now, in fermentation, we have a little trick that we use, which is called using a starter culture or a mother. I believe that our starter culture to 
steer our current culture of dominance and separation, steer it to a better place. Our starter culture is our human cultural history. We have already in place such an amazing architecture, slow-brazed architecture of how to cook, how to heal, how to grow. Once we start tapping this information, along with the new scientific information we're coming up with, um, as far as our, our oldest ancestors are concerned, like the fungus, the bacteria, the animals, the minerals, we'll start to come up with amazing solutions, solutions that grow, solutions that rot, solutions that breathe. Mycelial bricks, buildings that clean the air around them like coral, clothing that is grown, not sewn. We need complex living solutions if we want to continue to be creators and participants on our complex creative, beautiful planet. Thank you.